All right, this video is a continuation of yesterday's video, and it's going to be titled Making Your First Custom Bevel Profile. And so I aim to just kind of make a couple of profiles with you and then show creative ways to use them and just help you get started with custom profiles because more than likely if you're getting started with hard ops, you don't have any profiles actually saved because you never made any. So together, let's make some. For me, in my preferences, I actually have a location set up for saving my profiles inside of my Dropbox. So for users who are wanting to reuse their profiles across multiple installations or save and reuse them, you may want to do the same thing. But without further ado, let's go ahead and just send this cube away and we'll shift A, add a plane. And with our plane, we'll select this point and we'll just control click mark and just roll our points back until we just you know, get a nice baffle going. It doesn't really matter how many points we have or any of that because we'll be dealing with it differently today. And so what we want to do is begin playing with profile. So whenever it comes to profile, first thing I like to do is start dropping some points down so it shows all the options. I never even noticed it not showing all the options whenever it's not in use. And when it comes to accuracy inside of this, you got to be a bit of a um, kind of click magician. You know, you can zoom in and out on the curve editor, but I never use any of that because it just gets weird. But by pressing control C and control V and copying some of these X, Y positions and pasting them, you can get a pretty good uh, approximation of what you're going for. Like for me, I'm always just uh, aiming for these uh, interesting results that kind of would be the same thing of what I would get if I were playing with booleans, but you know, I'm trying to drop a point in between and it's being a little bit of a pain. So sometimes you got to create a point away from it and then come back and heal it. So, you know, nothing serious here. I'm just creating a couple of divots and then just healing them up to try to create their original ramps back. But whenever they're spun around using twist or spin, they'll look great. And we could do the same thing here. Just bring these in. People have already been asking me about the possibility of like some sort of editor, which this was one of the first things I said when we were dealing with profiles was it'd be nice to deal with the stuff in the 3D view with the power of box cutter or to take a plane that you model in 3D and turn it into a curve. So when it comes to those such things, we'll just have to see what the future holds. So right now I actually have enough points to encompass this shape, but if we lower the points a certain amount, you can see that they start taking away from the form. Whenever it comes to making profiles, the amount of segments you have in is important to whenever you save and recall it. So sometimes I will just eyeball it and ensure I have exactly enough points to get the shape without it being a point more or less. But there's also a driver that can be used for this. And so if we right click this and we choose to add driver uh, in the expression area, I actually have on my clipboard this LEN, which is going to search for the length of the self, which we need to check. And we can actually remove the var and we'll just press enter. And whenever, you know, this expression is being used, which I'll have displayed on the screen, it's basically searching for the length of the amount of the custom profile points of itself and then returning that. So, you know, as many points as we add, it'll just automatically update the counter. And so this is something that Luf was able to help me out with internally over the course of dealing with bevel profiles. And it became pretty handy for making profiles very quickly. Like this shape, I like to just go and mess with the Y and then I'll just press Control Z, copy the Y and then mess with the X. I could go to this thing, do the same thing, just press Control C, copy this, paste it in to all four of these in order to get it just super accurate if I want to just be really uh, nitpicky about this. But at this point, I can actually go ahead and save this. So like I was showing in the previous video, there is no save load in the modifier panel because we don't hijack it. But you can say press control tilde, go in the modifier helper area, and then under profile, there's going to be a save and load profile. So we're just going to save our profile. And I always just go to the last one in the list and just click plus to increment to the next number. And then we'll just save that profile. So now I'm able to save and recall this profile. So we're, we're pretty much good to go there. I'm actually going to duplicate this plane. We'll move it over and we will choose to reset the curve. And from here, we're just going to draw a different one. And notice that because the driver is already in place, it's just going to give us a much more interesting result. So I've actually been playing with the idea of making some of the most 
ridiculous uh, curve profiles ever, like things that you would never want to see as a curve profile. So one of them was actually drawing the letter X. I was about to say the number X, but you know, this video brought to you by the number X and our education system that failed me, but just kidding. I'm pretty good at English. So we will continue on here and it gets a little bit unruly. You know, it's like uh, Ngon, you know, Ngon is good and all, but it definitely doesn't tolerate any overlap, you know, which is why I'm always in wire mode. But if we just, you know, stick it out and just get these uh, lines here and just focus on our goal, we will actually be able to draw the shape that I had in mind. So this one's kind of a sillier profile, but if I were, you know, being serious, I would, uh, you know, control C, control V, those are all set. This point is on the X, so I'll paste that here. Uh, this one is on the X, we'll uh, paste that here. This one on the X and like so. And so every time I do this, I feel like I become a little bit more intelligent about how we could go about making this um, aspect of the pipeline better. But for now, you know, we, we like to introduce things as something that people can experiment with and, and try to grow with, um, even though people kind of wish that we would just bring things in in a uh, hyper fully developed state. But, you know, those sort of things cost time. And I like to um, provide the people working on things a chance to um, watch it be enjoyed before they begin diving into it, maybe even get some insights. So hopefully um, people are with us on that. So I'll press control C and we'll copy this one and paste it here, ensuring that that's a straight line. Control C, control V, that's a straight line. And so now I have this profile that's like a little X, which I already made one that's a little X, but you know, what's one more X, right? X is gonna give it to you. So, you know, I'll save this one from the hops tool. We'll just, did I mess this up somehow? Let's try that again, save profile. I don't know what I did there, but we'll just pretend we never saw that. And we'll just save the profile and we'll just duplicate this shape over and make another profile by just resetting the curve. And, you know, it's not the funnest thing, but it is pretty fun. And you could get in here and play with arcs too and save arcs. I'm just not in, in it for the arcs. You could, be making crown molding all day but for me i'm trying to really see what creative uses can be pulled out of bevel profile because whenever it was added to blender um it, we found out immediately that it wasn't supported by our current sort system so in a way i um, just sectioned it off in my brain as something that i won't be able to show in videos or mention until we actually get fixed so i'm, I'm so glad that I can finally show my face and bevel profile with you guys because, you know, it was a bit of a situation, you know, just like UV sort, uh, before UV project had sort, people would, um, ask about its purpose and what it was for. And it's like, um, we'll have to go over it whenever the sort is complete, then it's at a state that's capable of being shown. So we'll copy this and press control V and we'll copy this. Control C and Control V. And the reason that, you know, we're even talking about profiles today is because, you know, the state that we're looking at now with the workflow is pretty much as far as we need to go with things. I mean, we might take it a little bit further. Of course, you know, there's always um, greater ideas to be had with things, but for the most part, I feel that our bevel profile integration is pretty much where it's supposed to be. And, you know, anything more exploratory with it would, um, we can carry that on with the next level of bevel, which was an agenda we were working on internally. So, you know, we have this third profile, this like, just I always like to have little things stick up and go in. Just, I, I just imagine what this will look like when it spins and it'll make for a very beautiful piece. So we have these three profiles and I could just keep going. I see this video is already 10 minutes long. So. I should probably begin cycling towards the conclusion, but let's say that we wanted to put these profiles to work. So I'm just going to press G and move everything over after selecting it with A, and we'll just, um, you know, maybe maybe not move them too far away. You know, 
not ashamed of these. This one almost looks like the end of a state that's been gerrymandered, but just continuing on, we are just going to select this edge and just control click mark to just bevel just a single V group. And we'll sharpen it in object mode just to get the smoothing right. And if we go in bevel and we press shift P, we can adjust our bevel through and start scrolling through the profiles we made. So I'm just gonna start scrolling till I get to the ones we created, which this one's the first one, 30, 31, um, three, well, we'll go with 30. And we can see that the shading breaks down a little bit because we just stuck with regular default shading. So my favorite way to do it is shift clicking sharpen in order to bring up the auto smooth tool where you can just roll the wheel to get exactly how you want. And so, Lately for me, I've just been really trying to push auto smooth and its limits to see what we can get from it. So you saw me try to add an edge loop and it messed up my vertex group. So the easier way to get around that is to just extrude the bottom and then we can just grab this piece and I'm just going to alt click EM macro in order to push that inwards. And we can just grab this bottom and control click mark. And we can even press shift P to begin scrolling through these profiles. So we'll just jump to the ones that we created today, which that one's the probably the same one up above. So we'll go with this one. And there we are with profile two. What do we save this one as? Um, I'm just going to right click it, choose load profile, and we save 29, 30, 31. So the next one I'm going to be looking for is number 29. So we'll just select this edge, control click mark to just roll this edge in. And we could just leave it in object mode. I like setting up my profiles in object mode. It gives me a little bit more to look at. We could just press shift P and we're looking for profile 29. And we could load specifically this profile if we wanted it. But keep in mind that this one is, you know, more than likely this profile. And one of these is the X. So, you know, as crazy and random as it was for us to make a letter into a profile, it does look pretty cool whenever you use these things in action. So hopefully this video gives some insight to using Bevel profiles and how you can get the most out of them, as well as a driver that you can use to just really quickly help you get the amount of points that you need for your system that you're saving. In fact, I'm looking at this and I see 20, 20, and 24. So I got kind of lucky on my roulette of making these. So in closing, we can still go in with Hops tool and just modify each of these to just create a completely different form. And for this one, we actually went a little too far. So we shot into the second one or the third one here, which we can also play with the distance of. In fact, because clamp overlap is off, we're able to really shoot that thing up on the inside to get a really interesting shape. And an additional fun when it comes to bevel profiles is if we turn off, say the third one, and then we turn it back on to identify it, this is what a profile looks like regular. But if we were to go and locate the button for rotating it, we can actually rotate our profile and get a completely different profile for this thing altogether and still have room to play with this. Like we can select this edge, control click mark, and we see how things just don't work out. And if you see my modifier stack, you can see that because this V group modifiers at the bottom of the stack, it's gonna have issues. So if we shift scroll it up the stack, we can just press one and you know set it to regular profile, see what we're getting here. But if we go in um, object mode and we jump back into bevel, we see that we're modifying bevel four and I hold control and roll up to the first one. We're now modifying this one. And so I can just press shift P, roll in the wheel, and now we also have this random profile that we can begin bringing in, interjecting and playing with to just quickly make a nice, interesting connector using hard ops without a whole lot of effort, especially once you begin saving up tons of these random profiles. So I've just been making a couple of profiles as I start out each day and then just saving them and then recalling them with really interesting results. You know, first it was on cube edges and then on bull shapes. And now we're finally seeing it on uh, cylinders. So, you know, I got 30 seconds left in this video. So another experiment I just want to show is that, you know, let's say you were taking a box to box city, right? And you were using box cutter. I got 20 seconds left. We'll just bring in this box and we'll grab this single edge and we'll control click mark in order to bevel this edge. 
but instead of um, leaving it with a bevel, we'll press Shift P and then scroll through profiles. And this is definitely the craziest way to mess with the Boolean ever. And with that, I'll wrap up this video and I thank you for watching.